would stand up and worship with us. We can always count on that one thing. The same God that never fails when I fail me now. He won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God that's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. joy when my heart is heavy all my days oh yes I will I count on one thing the same God that never fails will not fail me now he won't fail me now in the waiting the same God that's never late is working all things out he's working choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I Father, we thank you, God, for this beautiful Sunday morning. You blessed your church with again today. And Lord, as the song says, all of our days, we will bless your name. And I just pray today, God, as we enter into worship, Father God, whether we're live here in, in, the, in the church, or whether we're watching God live stream today, I just pray, God, that a message, a word, a thought, a prayer, a song. God, someone that needs a special touch today. Father God, they would feel your presence. And God, they would just rejoice in the fact, Lord, that in all their days, God, that they can bless the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's a reason I can see. There's a reason for this life inside me. One name above all names, Jesus. Yes, it's Jesus. There's a reason for this hope. There's a reason for this peace that I know. One worthy of all praise, Jesus. Yes, it's Jesus.
please greet someone nearby. Good morning again. Thank you so much for being here on this beautiful day. Isn't it gorgeous with the just the whole thing that's been washed with the rain last night? That was so nice to get that water. Love that. So if you're a first-time guest, uh, please text welcome to the number on the screen, 509-309-0958, and uh, you'll get a text back from our pastor and um, a free beverage in the Connections Cafe. If you are not in the loop, please get into the loop so you know what's coming up and um, work days and fun things and prayer requests also. Um, go into the loop. So loop to that same number. Sunday morning worship is at 9 and at 1030, except for next week. Um, we have one service um, for a very special reason, two special reasons. First one is because it's Memorial Day weekend. Uh, so one service at 1030. Um, and then right after service, we're having an all church barbecue. So the church is providing all of the meat and all of the um, accoutrement, um, utensils and stuff like that. Next week, it's not going to just be hamburgers, guys. Hot dogs, too. There's going to be hot <laughs> dogs. And there's going to be other goodies, too. I so we need you guys to bring sides, salads and desserts, if you would, please. Um, usually we say A through L bring salads and M through Z bring desserts, but we just need you to bring a bunch of stuff. Lots, lots and lots of good stuff, because we know y'all are good cooks, so... Uh, Sunday nights we've started last week was the first um, the first episode of the first season of the chosen Sunday nights at six o'clock here in the sanctuary and we go through um, each episode and then at the end there's a dis time of discussion and questions and 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 good talk so uh, it's a good time of fellowship please come if you can and also on Wednesday nights at 630 in the connections cafe we have faith factor or our youth group and it's a good group of kids um, and it they learn about not only learn about the Lord but they they also start those bonds that really walk them through these really hard times uh, of adolescence. So it's Pastor Randy, you've got a youth, a young adult one coming up here too, don't you, for our 20s? And when's the date on that one? Uh, that's the 18th and 17th. June, okay. okay. That's All right. good. Super. Um, there's also uh, once, once um, a month we do a youth uh, special event. This month they're going to do a movie night, Friday the 28th. So the beginning of Memorial Day weekend at 8 o'clock right here at the church. And they'll do popcorn and goodies and be silly. Yes, and young adults are welcome to come to the movie night, too. So um, if you want to see a movie, just it doesn't matter how old you are. If you want to see a movie Friday night, come on down. Um, fireworks. Oh, out there. Sorry. Outside? Sweet. Okay. Um, sorry. <laughs> fireworks fundraiser. Uh, every year we have our fireworks stand that, that are we going to join with? No, it's just going to be us this year. Uh, so, and last year we sold like everything. We were, so we're starting out with almost totally new stock this year. Uh, so we need volunteers and we're going to uh, get together and discuss who can be where, when. And we need people to set up, tear down, uh, be there at the booth. Uh, run between the booth and where everything is. So we need all kinds of people. Uh, see, please see Pastor Randy or Josh for details, and um, we will. Yep. If if you didn't hear him, he said if you want to help out, um, just hang out after his service for a minute or two, and and he'll give you some info. Um, all church camp out. Man, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, all church camp out um, for in September, the weekend after Labor Day is the 10th through the 12th, and we will be at Harris Park. Uh, no Sunday morning service because we're going to be having it out underneath the trees. So It'll be a morning there. service, and we'll even be broadcasting it, but it won't be here. Right. So we have such a good time, y'all. So come if you can. If you can just come for the day, if you want to do day trips, that works too. Um, so 
If you have anything else that is going on, please text it to the loop and we can get everybody else in on it, okay? So please join us for worship now. Who you? 
presence in this place. Holy Spirit, this is Pentecost Sunday. Fall fresh upon this place, Father. As I have sensed from the moment we walked into this this wonderful sanctuary, Father. Because of the people that are here, Father, and the hearts that are represented and the Holy Spirit that fills the body, the soul, and the spirit. Because, God, when our spirit is communing with your spirit, it's going to bring everything else into perspective, our bodies and our souls and our minds. And we humbly stand here before you this morning, thanking you for the blessings that you bestow upon us, the mercies which are new every morning, the love that is poured out upon us, the filling of your Holy Spirit as we worship as we praise, as we lift up your precious holy name. Father, with our thanksgiving, with our praise, with our worship, we humbly come before you this morning and bring to you our requests. Before we do that, I know that over this last year and a half, we um, have gotten away from... um, praying for each other as far as um, coming forward and praying for each other. But this entire morning, I have just um, sensed into my spirit that there is somebody that needs a real touch from the Lord today. And I'm going to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. This morning, if you would like to come forward, and you would like us to pray for you, please do that. Don't hesitate. We want to do that. We want to take time to pray with you. And, and I just feel like God is just ready to pour out upon you. I don't know what it is. I don't know if you need a healing. I don't know if there's something going on in your life that you're just confused about something. And um, But you just need to know today. You need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God sees you. And he understands every single thing that you're going through and you're facing. So if that's you this morning, I don't know who it is. God didn't tell me who it is. But he just said there's somebody that just really needs a physical touch and needs needs to know that God sees, God hears. And it may be more than one person. I don't know. But I know there was at least one. 
God told me to be obedient, and I'm going to be obedient. So I'm asking you to be obedient. If God is prompting you in your heart, and you just feel that, I really want to just have people pray with me. Just come join us up here this morning, and we're going to just take some time, and we're going to pray for you. this morning online and you say that's me <laughs> I'm not there I can't come forward would you just in the comments below right now in this broadcast would you just say that's me I need a touch from the Lord I need to know that God sees me and God hears me today and we're going to pray for you this morning that right there wherever you're at whether you're at work or in your car or as you're at home that God will just make himself just so real to you. That you will feel his presence just surround you, the Holy Spirit surround you. And we're just going to pray for you right now. We just, Father, we just bring those that are online this morning. I think of Mary and Mar this morning. God, she needs a touch from you. I know that she knows that you're there. But Lord God, I just pray that as she's recuperating from all these surgeries, Father, and all these complications, pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit's presence would just surround her right now in her room. And God, she would sense it more than powerful than she ever has before. And that warmth would flow through her body, Lord Jesus. And she would begin to feel the healing of the Holy Spirit as it burns through her from the top of her head to the bottoms of her feet, Lord God. For those others that have commented and said, that's me, I need a touch from the Lord today. Father, you know who they are. God, we just ask humbly ask would you be merciful and grace filled with grace for us and for these people that are reaching out even online Lord Jesus and saying that's me I need a touch from Jesus today Father whatever their need is that you would meet them now wherever they're at in the name of Jesus we pray thank you Jesus I just Jesus. 
to us every day, your will, that we be open vessels to receive that which you have for us to do, to say, to be a part of. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' precious name. instruments as his vessels may we be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name Amen and Amen and Amen Thank you, ma'am. See it takes a, a, a large group of people to keep pastor in line, and uh, what a joy it is to worship with these gals and guys and to be able to come into the presence of the Lord. Today is going to be kind of an interesting time. I want to just share with you, continuing on in the fact that you don't have a soul. Just looking around, seeing who wasn't here last week, who, you know, any eyebrows that are rising, you don't have a soul. But I do want to assure you, you are a soul. You have a body, and that body's going to die. Your soul is going to continue on. 
I love that statement. Only what's done for Christ will last. Every other thing will fade away. You heard me say that. Almost a mantra it might be on my tombstone. I don't know. But, but I, believe, I believe that what we're here for is to do the work of the Lord. And so this morning I want to continue on in this uh, two-part series that I'm sharing with you on the body, the spirit, and the soul. And last week we talked about the soul. I want to talk to you about the spirit today. I want to talk to you about you, you have a spirit and it communes with God. Amen? It communes with God and he fills us with his presence. God fills us with his holy, holy presence. The Holy Spirit of God dwells within these temples. He no longer has a temple for his people. He has a people for his temple where his Holy Spirit dwells. And now that I've gotten just nice and comfortable on my little seat here, I'm going to ask you all to stand with me as we read this scripture together from 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 24. Same verse that we had last week. I love this scripture. It speaks so real to, to me. I hope it speaks as real to you. Be joyful always. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all. All circumstances, how's that working for you? For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Father, we can take that to the spiritual bank. You've given us this in, in, in your scriptures to know. I don't want anybody to walk away from here today and say, well, what was pastor saying with all of the things that he was thinking? It's the word of God. And these Words that you give to us are given from you to us personally so that we can commune and have a relationship with you. You gave us your Holy Spirit, Father, knowing what we were going to go through and the things that were going to happen in our lives. You knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. God, you've given us the opportunity to make a choice and a decision to accept Your son is our Lord and Savior. And so, Father, with every ounce of strength I have, I'm going to proclaim the word of God. I'm going to share it. I'm going to preach it. I'm going to teach it. And I'm going to use words if necessary. I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit, as it is blessing and moving in our midst now, continues to, Father, and we go from this place strengthened, encouraged, and lifted up. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. The problem today, I see, is the fact that people are trying to fill the void in their minds with everything but Jesus Christ. There are so many things that are going on in this world that they can fill their minds with. And they figure, well, Christianity is the last thing that I need to know because I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made woman. I've made my fortunes. I've got my houses. I've got my cars. Remember that statement. Only what's done for Christ is going to last. Everything else will fade away. Do you know that in in research, 4,200 religions, 4,200 religions, I don't know if that's totally true, Because every day, it seems like there's a new religion that's being discovered or formed or thought about. 4,200 religions. G.K. Chesterton wrote this. He said, when people cease to believe in God, they do not believe in nothing. They do not believe in nothing. They believe in everything and anything. When people stop believing in God, they don't stop believing in nothing. They start believing anything and everything. And there are so many cults. There are so many religions. There are so many beliefs. But can I make a flat-out statement here? No man comes to the Father but by his Son, Jesus Christ. Ye must be born 
again. I had a precious sister tell me this morning, what you said last week was exactly what was said to me. When my sister wanted me to come to know Jesus, if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to hell. It's pretty blatant, isn't it? Pretty straightforward, isn't it? You thought I had all my notes prepared and everything I was going to say. You talk to me before the services, I'll share what, what you share if it's able to be shared. When people cease to believe in God, they do not believe in nothing. They believe in anything. Do you believe we live in a spiritual universe? Do you believe we live in a spiritual universe? Why would we live in a spiritual universe? We're spiritual beings, are we not? We're spiritual beings. We aren't spirits. We have spirit. God breathed, what? The spirit of life into us, and our spirit communes with his spirit. John 4, 24 says, God is spirit and his worshipers must worship, what? In spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. Angels are spirits. Angels are spirits. In fact, the Bible calls them in Hebrews 1, 14, ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. Ministering spirits who sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. Ministering spirits. There's also other spirits too. They're called evil spirits. And the enemy is trying to drive us almost to insanity at times with the ineffectiveness of, of what this world drives in our hearts and minds as being the most important things that we can do. Money, fame, you know, good looks. I lost that one a long time ago. Power. I, I believe, you guys, that being filled with the Holy Spirit reveals so much more in the spiritual being that's in us that we can do nothing but praise God. We can do nothing but worship God. We can do nothing but lift up the name of Jesus. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess, what? That Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. In the Bible, when you see the word spirit, you'll, you'll see that it's a capital S. It's referring to the Holy Spirit. And when spirit is spelled with a small s, it refers to the human spirit. For instance, let's take a look at Romans 8, 16. The spirit, capital S, himself testifies with our spirit, small s, that we are God's children. Flat out, rubber meat in the road. We are God's children. Children, I should hear a woohoo, I should hear amen, thank you Jesus, hallelujah, I believe that, I claim that, I receive that. That our spirit, the spirit within us, testifies with the spirit of God that we are God's children. In verse 16 through 22, Paul brings to us eight rapid fire admonitions. These are eight pearls of wisdom that string together. And so I put them together into four uh, statements organized so that we can really see how we can stay spiritually sharp. Staying spiritually sharp. sharp I, that's so much better than being spiritually dull. I want to be spiritually sharp. Hearing the voice of God, knowing the will of God. Number one is called develop an attitude of joyful, thankful prayer. Amen? You haven't heard me say that before, have you? Developing an attitude of joyful, thankful prayer. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. One of the things that I hear a lot of is how do I know the will of God? How do I know the will of God? Uh, the word of God tells us his will. I think it says it right here. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I think he probably says if you can't get this one yet, when you get this one, when you figure this one out, I'll give you some more of my will. I'll show you more of what I want you to do. But let's work on this one right now. Being joyful always, praying continually, giving thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you 
in Christ Jesus. Be joyful always. The world talks about happiness. It talks about happiness. What's, I, I'm trying to think of some songs. Uh, uh, happy, you know. Um, be happy. That, do you know where happiness comes from? It comes from the word hap. <laughs> Go figure. And you know what hap stands for? It stands for luck. So when you're happy with your hap, then things are going good. And when you're sad with your hap, things are going bad. But there's a difference, you guys, in the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my salvation. Why is that? Because we're walking in the joy of the Lord. And there's power in that. There's strength in that. There's a moving of the Holy Spirit that, that sometimes it's hard to express that joy. See, joy isn't dependent on our circumstances. Joy isn't dependent on our circumstances. It's dependent only on the character and the nature of Jesus Christ and the fullness of his spirit within us. Within each one of us. The fullness of his spirit. Are you, are, are you full of the Holy Spirit? Are you full of the Holy Spirit? Bonnie, I love you sitting right there because I get a direct line right to you. And your smile is just blessing my heart today. You too, Caden. You're just right back there, dude. Love you. Wish you'd take your hat off. But I love you. And I'm glad you're here this morning. Pray continually. Ah, pray continually. You've heard me say this before. It doesn't mean that you walk around with your head bowed and your, your eyes closed and constantly you'll run into something, guys and gals. You'll, don't do it while you're driving. What does it mean? It means that we're in communication with God. Ladies, have you ever ridden in the car with your husbands for long periods of time, like six, seven hours, and nothing is said? Nothing is said. But on the spur of the moment, something can be said. Something is said. Oh, did you see that? Oh, no. Now, my wife is great. I can go eight hours with her riding the car. She sees a deer, and I know it. She sees an elk, I know it. You should see it when she sees a moose. She lets me know. But we talk about other things as we're in the car and as we're driving. But it's the same way with God. If you're in relationship with God... Our communication with him can happen at any time if we're in relationship with him, if we're communing with him, if we're sharing with him. That's what I believe it means to pray continually. You're in a relationship with God Almighty through his son. Can you give thanks in every circumstance? Can we give thanks in every circumstance? It's what God wants us to do, but we're human, and there's that side of us where we're sad. And when someone dies, I said this last week, it doesn't mean that God doesn't want us to mourn and to grieve, but he wants to be joyful, especially if that man or that woman knew Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And during a funeral, you know when I'm joyful, if I'm doing a service for somebody who is not saved? I am joyful because I have the opportunity to minister to people that I may not ever be together with again, and I am going to share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ and the saving grace of our Lord and Savior. Every funeral I do, I end it with, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if there's one thing that this person would want me to tell you is don't wait a moment longer. Why not now? Why not here? The minute they shut their eyes, they knew the truth, and they knew that all of this was real. Absent from the body, in the presence of the Lord. Alexander White, he was a famous Scottish pastor, and he would praise the Lord in all things, Ruthie, all things. He would give thanks to the Lord, whatever was going on. So one day it was cold, and it was icy, and it was miserable outside. And his congregants came together and they said, now how will pastor Praise the Lord this morning. He got up and he prayed, thank you, God, that it's not always like this. Thank you, God. Your sun is shining, even in the clouds. When I did my talk show uh, uh, 
for about two years, every time I'd start that, good morning, Walla Walla, the sun is shining somewhere. Even if these clouds are covering our valley, the sun is still shining. Is the sun shining within you, even in the clouds of your life? Are you giving thanks? Are you praising the Lord? Are you walking in the victory and the power of God Almighty? See, I believe that praying and giving thanks are related because when we're walking in the Spirit, we're constantly giving thanks to God. We're constantly giving thanks to God. Ephesians 3, 4. Mr. Bradley, I'm going to need your help on that one. It's not clicking for me. Ephesians 3, 14 says this. For this reason, I kneel before the Father. For this reason, I kneel before the Father. See, bowing in prayer is an act of humility. It is an act of respect. It's an act of honoring God. And it is so important that we give honor where it is due. Amen? that we honor our Heavenly Father who gave us His Son and fill us with His Holy Spirit, we should still go, woohoo! praise God! Because the world has no comprehension of this. No comprehension of this. But it's our job to share with them that love, that power, that anointing. The work of God Almighty through His Word. How do we do that? By sharing the Gospel and using words if necessary. And you know how we do that? By loving the unlovely. By speaking hope into the hopeless. By speaking promise into those who feel there is no promise for them. Do you believe that there's a promise for everyone? Do you believe that God would have everyone to receive eternal life? Will everyone receive eternal life? No. Why is that? Because God's going to snuff them out, step on them, stomp on them, say, you don't, you're not worthy? No, he's going to give every person the opportunity. It's us who make the choice. It's us who make the choice how we live our lives. It's us who decide how we walk and do life together. It's, it really is freedom of choice. It's, it's that free will that he gives to us. And either we're going to be effective as men and women of God, or we're going to be complacent and, and apathetic in this walk. I pray the joy of the Lord is your strength. I pray you are excited about Christ. I pray that you know him personally and that he is a part of every part of your day, even in the unlovely parts of your day. Because doesn't it say that God honors every part of our body, even those that is lesser, and that is just exalted? In all things, give thanks. Several years ago, I was, having a, I was having a difficulty, um, and it was affecting a certain uh, routine that I did every day. And, uh, and there was a real problem there because uh, a certain part of my anatomy had become very, very large and was suppressing the ability for me to be able to void. And it was very disheartening, very concerning. My PSA level was at 18. And a lot of you don't, may not have known that. But when your PSA level is at 18, you, you pretty much have prostate cancer. The first doctor that I saw told me that when it was at 8. He said, I'm sorry, Tim, but this is going to be cancer. And so until I got up to 18, uh, I just trusted in the Lord. And then went in for a major surgery. They did the work that they needed to do. Everything, if I can say this, has worked out, and we are seeing, uh, my PSA is up a little bit, I've got to go to the doctor tomorrow in Idaho, that's why I won't be here tonight for The Chosen, and I hope, please guys and gals, come and see this tonight, um, those who were here last week, it was, it was, it's the start of a movie, it really is, you don't get the narration of, and Jesus called Peter and John and Matthew, and they came, and he saw them as fishermen, and he said, I will make you fishers, it didn't, it's not any of that, it's a start of a movie, you don't know who these characters are, starts out with a little girl who's told by her father, a message out of Isaiah, scriptures of Isaiah, and then as it gets into the movie, as she is grown and filled with, with demonic spirits, Jesus says those same words to her. And she realizes who he is. So I hope you'll come tonight and, and be a part of this season one of The Chosen. We don't have a promise of tomorrow, guys and gals, but we know who holds our tomorrows. 
And the reason I told you about this story about my health is because when, when, when we go through life, when we walk this journey, we don't have a promise of tomorrow, but we know who holds our tomorrows. And I told you this before, with every ounce of strength that I have, I want to proclaim the love of Jesus Christ. Love. That word, love. Several of us have talked about the differences in love and charity. And what, 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 is, what does it mean? But I pray on the, on the epitaph of my tombstone that it would be, he showed love. And that was the love of Christ. What will be the legacy that you leave? It seems that everything that I do, I was talking with the team yesterday, everything that I do seems to be so big and so out there with the, the doing of the, the, the Christmas carol and wonderful life and, and um, uh, our church. Uh, there's no reason why this little church should be here on the corner of 11th and Main. I have the Church of God, which I'm going to bring to you in a business meeting down the line here, which I think I know what your answer will be, wants us to come under the umbrella of the Church of God. They want us to become a part. I'm an ordained minister in the Church of God. I'm a part of a couple of boards that, uh, with, with the churches. And I, but I feel that we're an autonomous church that's called to do something here and do it big, <laughs> make a difference. Yesterday we had 15 people out at the amphitheater. Did we have 15? Maybe I'm spiritually speaking. Maybe, maybe 12. Maybe. And, and we were out there and we were, we were having such a kick of a time getting getting scratched by blackberries and, 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 and stepping in rattlesnake holes. and I mean, it was just a kick of a day. What? you look at me like that was fun? Yeah, you know why? Because I was at Brothers and Sisters, and we were rejoicing in making a difference. Because this old amphitheater has been empty for seven years. It was a mess, wasn't it? It was just a mess. If people walked into it now today, they'd say, what have you done? <laughs> What have you done? If you can picture Cinderella's castle with the Wicked Witch, all the blackberries covering the entrances of this place and down the seats and everything like that, kind of like sin in our lives. And when people take time to make a difference, some may think, oh, that's a really big thing. Some may think it's not a very big thing. But to me, I believe it's a power of God in the lives of men and women. What does it say? Where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. Two hands are good, but four, eight, six, 12, 14, 16 hands are much better. And we saw a change happen out there. It was a big change. If everything goes well, I really hope that the first event that we have out there is a community service. And we invite our mayor and our sheriffs and our police chiefs and our port commissioners and uh, just everybody in the community we have a couple of the singing groups from the high school come out and we just pray a prayer of blessing. I don't care if it's the city. I don't care if it's the community. We pray a prayer of blessing over that place so that it will be used for the glory of God. And then the second service that we'll have is a unity service of all our churches. So I want the community to know. They may think this is an extension of our church. No, this is an extension of what God's called us to do in this community and make a difference. So... What's your purpose for being here? Is your life a purpose to share the gospel and use words if necessary? If one person comes to know Christ because of your witness, is it not worth it? Is it not worth it? If one child comes, I've put a time thing on this. We're going to try to get a 15-year lease on this, 15 to 20-year lease on this amphitheater. Do you know how old I will be when that lease is over? I'm going to be almost 90. You know how I tell people now? I'm one year less able to do anything out there than I was last year. We are one day closer today to the coming of Jesus Christ. So don't you think it's important that we make a difference by the leading of the Holy Spirit, however that is. Fourth of July fireworks? Come on. The church is selling fireworks Every bag this year that goes out is going to have a statement in it about the love of Jesus Christ. A statement. Not about the church. Oh, come worship with us. We're the greatest church in town. We're not the only church in town. We're one of many churches that preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we are wanting to reach out into the community. And see, people seem to like to blow up things. Did you see 4th of July last year? 
It was crazy. It was a war zone out here. I think it's going to be the same thing here. So if you can be a part of that, please do. It's another just little thing that your pastor's involved with. Not much, but love to have you out at the fairgrounds and, and helping us. Okay, I'm now back to my notes. Number two, <laughs> cooperate with God's spirit within you. Do not put out the spirit's fire. Cooperate with God's spirit within you. Do not put out the spirit's fire. Do you think we can quench the spirit? Do you think we can quench the spirit? Oh, okay. I'm getting some shaking of heads. No. Have you ever, have you ever sensed the Holy Spirit leading you to get on an email or a text to somebody and to just speak life into them or to just speak promise into them or to speak hope into them. Have you ever been... And, and if you don't do that, I think that's a quenching of the Spirit. If the Spirit Now it says test the Spirit and see if it's of God. So do that. Test everything that I say to you up here with the Word of God. Don't take it for fact. You go back and prove it. And then we'll talk about it on Monday night in our men's group. And then we'll talk about it on Wednesday evening uh, in the service here. And then we'll talk about it in the ladies' group. And we'll talk about it because I'm, I don't want to do 52 messages a year and not have you guys remember the next day what I talked about. I want you to take it in and feed on it and disagree with me. Test it. See if it's real. But we must not quench the spirit of God. Ever felt like giving to some special cause or a needy person out there? I have. Have you ever felt like it, it's important? And, and you said, nah, I, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Quenching the spirit. Sharing the gospel with somebody that you meet and saying, well, another, it'll, another time. Quenching the spirit. So what this is, do not put out the spirit's fire. Everywhere within the Bible, what does fire depict? A lot of the times. Spirit of God. So this is saying, don't put out that, that, that spirit fire. Allow that spirit fire to flow through you and in you. Don't quench the spirit, King James Version says. Don't quench the spirit. If we obey God and we honor that leading, of his spirit. I think great and powerful things will and are and continue to be done because we're being faithful. But if you quench the spirit, it's like pouring a gallon of water on a candle. It's, that candle is not going to be effective. It's going to be drenched like yesterday when we were out at the amphitheater. And it was beautiful. It was nice in the morning. And then it rained on us for an hour and we were soaked. But then the glorious sun came out and dried us up. Dried us off. Dried us out. Off. The power of the Holy Spirit is like that. We can get drenched by the enemy. We can even put the, quench the spirit of the Lord. But the Holy Spirit is so powerful that it reminds us of what we are about, what our purpose is, who we are, and what we're supposed to do in the time that we're given to do it. Reminds me of that statement, only what's done for Christ will last. Every other thing will fade away. Did I say that earlier? Only what's done for Christ will last. Every other thing will fade away. I want us to be mindful of when we could be quenching the Holy Spirit. Get out of the way. Allow God to move through you. Share the gospel. And use words if necessary. Number three, respect the preaching of God's word. Respect the preaching of God's word. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Now, I'm not talking about what the world thinks of today as prophecies and uh, telling the future. Or like a, a, a magic crystal ball. I'm talking about the preaching of God's word. I'm talking about allowing the word of God to come into us. To move in us. F.F. F. Bruce said 
about prophesying. It's declaring the mind of God in the power of the Spirit. The mind of God in the power of the Spirit. Now, I know, you guys, I'm not the greatest preacher in the world. I, I'm, I'm, I, I know that. But I do believe that God has called me for such a time as this to bring forth the word of God. That when you leave this place, you're not going to go away saying, wow, that was a lot of good stuff that the pastor said, but I wish he would have backed it up with scripture. You may go away from this place going, wow, pastor backed that up with a whole lot of scripture. It's really hard to refute what he said, but I'm going to go into the word and I'm going to go take a look and I'm gonna, that's what I want you to do. That's what the spirit of God wants you to do. To test and see. If what is being taught, if what is being shared is really truly from God, declaring the mind of God in the power of the Spirit. And that's what the Old Testament scholars, the Old Testament uh, men of God did in the Spirit of God, sharing the writings of, of the Lord, sharing the writings of God, the inspired word of God, declaring the mind of God in the power of God. Of the Spirit. Coming together and worshiping the Lord in our church building, hearing the Word of God, hearing the Word of God is one of the things God, I believe, with all of my heart, wants us to do. What does Scripture say? Forsake not the assembling of the brethren. And it's true, coming to church doesn't make you a Christian. It doesn't make you a Christian. But healthy Christians make a habit of showing up for fellowship with other believers. Worshiping the Lord and lifting our voices in one accord and the preaching of God's word. You are all called to be ministers of the gospel. Are you sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ in your everyday life? You may not be called to be a pastor of a church. I certainly didn't think I was until God saw it to be fit. And you guys, I don't know what you got yourself into, but we're in this together. God's doing some powerful things within your lives because you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to come here because this is a church. God's Spirit dwells within you. And others see that light reflecting through you. Hebrews 10, 25 says, Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. Encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Is the day approaching? Do you believe that the day of the Lord is approaching? Encourage one another. Do not tear down your brothers and your sisters. Don't tear someone down because they may not believe the same doctrine of you. Encourage one to study the word of God to understand that scripture that says no man comes to the Father. That that scripture that says we are children of a living God, not a dead God, not a a Lord that's in a tomb. I guess I can take you to many tombs around the world and the remains of these men are there. But now my Jesus, he's no longer on that cross and he's no longer in that tomb. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen risen indeed. Oh, and by the way, I hope next year we're over at the amphitheater for our sunrise service. And in a year there, I really, 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 really hope that we're doing the Passion Play in that theater. Yes, with live horses, live people, and sharing the gospel. If we're not, we'll be back in the park for the Easter sunrise service and we won't be doing the passion play in our church. Simple as that. No horses, no. Live people though. There will be live people here. So let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. As I said before, every week we are one week closer to the return of Christ. We are one week closer to the return of Christ. Over the past three years, can I ask you this question? Are you in church more now than you were three years ago? 
Are you worshiping with brothers and sisters more than you were three years ago? And I am thankful that you are here today. I am thankful that you are here. 1 John 4.1 tells us this. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Test the spirits. Remember, we talked about that. There are ministering spirits and there are evil spirits, and they're out there. We are spiritual beings living in a world that we see around us. Let's put on those spiritual glasses. Let's see through spiritual eyes, spiritual realms. Because God is not through with us yet. He's only just begun. Remember the carpenter song? It's only just begun. What's the name of our church? New beginnings. New beginnings. God has called us for such a time as this. I want to go back to that number four, and it was filter everything through God's word, test everything, hold on to the good, and avoid every kind of evil. Guys, gals, you know what's evil out there. You didn't fall off the turnip truck yesterday. You weren't just born yesterday. You know what's evil out there. Avoid every kind of evil. And that's where we allow our minds to go to. What we allow our eyes to see. Where we allow our, ourselves to be involved with. So God is telling us through his word. Avoid every kind of evil. So when we know what God's will is for our soul, our spirit, and our body. Do you think we're going to have a better understanding of what salvation is really like? What it's all about? If we have that understanding of a healthy spirit, a healthy mind, a healthy body. Do you think Adam and Eve died spiritually? Do you think Adam and Eve died spiritually? Because what did God say to them when they were in the garden? You can eat from every tree in this garden except... The tree of knowledge. You eat from that and you will die. I wonder if Adam and Eve would have died physically if they hadn't eaten from that tree. Because we know that the devil told them, he said, surely you will not die. You won't die. God didn't mean that. 930 years later, Adam died. He didn't die immediately. But you know what? I think he died spiritually. Thinking about what he had in that garden when they were cast out. His dysfunctional family. Son killed his other son. There was so much. If you follow the lineage of of, of Adam and Eve. Oh my goodness. When we give way to the enemy. The enemy takes leeway. As a Christian, I believe you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You become a child of God. I'm not going to get into the discussion of once in grace, always in grace, losing your salvation. What I do believe, we become a child of God. And I believe the enemy makes us, tries to get us to be ineffective, complacent, apathetic, as I said earlier. But to be spiritually fit, we've got to, we've got to be speaking into, uh, we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to speak into our souls and into our minds and into our bodies and into our spirits to understand what salvation is and what it means to the lost. Because I don't want to scare you, but there's a lot of zombies out there. Dead men walking. They may be physically looking like they're alive, but they are spiritually dead. They're spiritually dead. They don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. What did I just say earlier? What did we believe? No man comes to the Father except by the Son. Unless you are born again, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Repent of your sins or you will pay the price of spending eternity in hell. And you know what hell is to me. Hell is total total separation from God. That's hell. I want an intimacy with God. When Adam and Eve sinned, the intimacy and the innocence went away from them, left them. 
They knew they were naked. They hid from the Lord. When a child is introduced to immorality in, in, you know, in, in the things of this world, I've seen it before. The innocence of a child is gone. It's gone. Their eyes are open. They, they see things and understand things that they were never supposed to, to understand or, or have comprehension of. And I think that's hap- that happened with Adam and Eve. God didn't want them to know that. He was their protector. He was their provider. He was their supplier. They, want, they had no need whatsoever for anything. And yet the enemy got in and disrupted paradise. Disrupted paradise. I think it's important for us to understand because all of us are dead spiritually until Jesus comes to live in our spirit through the Holy Spirit. John 1, 4 says this, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And I say this again to you. I want to read this one more time to you so that you understand that there are deceiving spirits out there, even in the name of Jesus. That's crazy, isn't it? False prophets. Spreading lies. So that's why it's so important for us to be in the word so that the word can be in us. And we know the truth. And we can test the spirits and see if they are of God. Genesis 2, 16 and 17. Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat of that, you shall surely die. Adam lived for another 930 years, and then he died. I think God is telling us you now have a certain period of time in your life to do my will. Don't get off track. I have prayed diligently about this church, about the shows that we've done, about the amphitheater. I don't want to be out of the will of God. I want to be where God wants us to be. He's entrusted in me, the pastor of this church. I believe pastors are held far more responsible even than the lay person because of what we are called to share with congregation. And I ask you to pray for me. Pray for the pastors of our community because there's some heavy weights on our, our shoulders. And I believe that God is calling us. And as you watch on the Internet today, I ask you to pray for us. Pray for our little church. Um, I know we have family in Olympia, Washington. I know that we have people over in Renton that, that we're your church. And I am so thankful that you're with us. See, we're in this together, guys and gals. You're not in this alone. You're not a lone ranger. And if you feel like you're a lone ranger, then there's a problem. And you need to saddle up next to somebody, a mentor. Remember I said this last, someone at confidence, someone you can talk to, someone you can pray with. Some of you can trust. Don't try to say all the words that you think that you should say. Listen and hear that still small voice of the Lord. God wants us to be a whole person. He wants us to be a whole person. And when our body is right, we're healthy. When our soul is right, we're joyful. When our spirit is right, we're holy. One day, we'll stand before the Lord. And I believe that we will, we will hear him say this. If we, we know him as our Lord and Savior. Come, stand by me, good and faithful servant. Well done. Well done. God's work in our lives begins within our spirit and moves outward. Once he does a real work in our life, in our spirit, then we're going to have the desire for it to go outward, moving into our soul and into our body. And this key passage points out that wholeness is not something that we can achieve on our own. It's something only God can do. I'm going to jump over here. 1 Corinthians No, 1 Thessalonians 5.24 says this. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. 
The one who calls you is faithful. You've all been called. I don't think you'd be here today if you weren't called. And I believe that he has a powerful work for you to do. May we open our spiritual eyes. May we feed our souls. May we feed our spirits. May we feed our minds on the things of God. See, sanctification isn't a special act or process Jesus does for us. It's simply Jesus living in us and through us every day of our lives. I want to share one other thing with you. When Jesus saves us, we receive life immediately in our spirit. And the Bible calls that being justified. When we receive life progressively in our souls, the Bible calls that being sanctified. And even though our bodies will die one day, whether they're cremated, blown up, buried, flood, I believe our bodies will be raised from the dead. I'm going to leave it up to God how glorified those bodies are going to be and how they're going to look. People say, well, what will we look like? How will we be? I'm going to trust that in him. But when it talks about this being justified and our souls being sanctified and our bodies being glorified, that's where I mean God wants us to be whole, to be a whole person. When I was a little boy, there was a little song that, that I sang that I learned, and it says, He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth, and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. Because he's still working on me. Anybody agree with that? See, God is not through with you yet. Please be patient with me. God is not finished. So if you came in here today feeling like, oh, I'm going to sit with a bunch of holy, sanctified, perfect people, you're wrong because I'm here. God's still working on me. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you for the strength of your word. Thank you for the joy of your word, the salvation of your word, which was with God, and the word was God in the beginning. You've given us such a precious gift, Father your son. May we abide in you as you abide in us, Father. May your word become so real and so strong and so powerful within us that when people try to throw things at us that is not of the word, we can call them on it. And we can say, that is not from God. That is not from the word. I don't know what Bible you're reading, but it's not the Bible that God gave to us. So, Father, may your word be true. May it be powerful. May it be strengthening to us. May everybody who leaves this place today be uplifted and encouraged and watching on the Internet saying, it was good to be in the house of the Lord to worship, to sing praises, to hear the word of God. Lord, thank you. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for making me whole. Thank you for giving to me thy great salvation, so precious and free. Thank you for giving me a mind to make the decision to accept you. You didn't force me. You didn't demand it. You gave me the opportunity, as you've given each and every one of us. If there be one person here today that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, I pray that they will open their heart to you. They will ask you to come in, forgive them of their sins, be their Lord and Savior. Accept them just as they are, knowing that you will do the changing and they will become a much healthier person because of it. Lord, I love these folks. Thank you so much for their hearts. Thank you for their love for you. Thank you for your presence dwelling within these temples. God bless them. I miss them when I'm away from them during the week. I long for these times together. I long for our singing and our worship and our praise to you, Lord, for it's all about you. It's all about you. And I want to just thank you again.
I want to open the service with thank you, and I want to close the service with thank you. Because you are a great God. And we love you, and you love us. And that's all there is to it. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. Kind of don't want to go. I got four more minutes. Let's stand and sing this chorus together that we learned today. It's a fun song. And we will lift up our hands. We will lift up our voice. We will shout of your love till the day we die. We'll lift up minds up. I will raise my voice high. I will shout of your love till the day that I die. Everything that I have, all my worship I bring. You're the reason I live. You're the reason I sing. Yes, you're the reason I live. You're the reason I sing. You're the reason I live. You're the reason I sing. And all God's people said, Amen. And all God's people said, And all God's people said, Amen. Blessings. Have a wonderful day, wonderful week, and we will see you. You'll see each other. Oh, hey, and by the way, everybody, just to let you know, we have a work day, one more day, out of the amphitheater. Next Saturday, we're starting at 6. You can come in anytime. We normally cut off at noon. I just looked at some people going, 6? I ain't getting up at 6 o'clock. I saw that. I saw that. But come, we break at 12 o'clock, and we have lunch together and fellowship. There's still several things to do out there. Pray for us as God continues to lead. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. The day that I die.